Hey, good afternoon, or good day, whatever. It might be morning to you. Hey, this is Todd. I'm a regular dude walking in the Word. Um, the title of the message today is God Will Provide, and it's taken from Genesis 22, verses 13 through 24. This is concluding the story that we started yesterday where Abraham is tested. Abraham goes up onto Mount Moriah and is told by God, sacrifice your son Isaac. And he goes through with it. Abraham goes through with it. All, um, up until the point he's about ready to kill him and the angel of the Lord says, hey, nope, stop doing it. Don't do that. Um, pass the test. So um, we're going to pick it up right from that point on. Okay. Now, this is a foreshadowing, and it's called God Will Provide Today. This is all a foreshadowing of the of the crucifixion of Jesus, okay? And um, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Right there in the beginning of that verse, it says God will provide, you know, gave his only begotten Son. And in the same way, Abraham here is getting ready to give up his only begotten son. But he stopped, he stopped by the angel. And you're going to see how God provides the sacrifice here. So let's pick it up in verse 13. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Ding, ding, right there you go. The, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is said, on that mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. <laughs> to this day, it, it, it's, Abraham named that mountain, you know, God will provide. And that's the significance of that mountain. We talked about it yesterday. The significance of that mountain was, you know, in this event here. But that same mountain was used, you know, that's where the temple was built. And in that same area is where Jesus was crucified. Okay. So the same mountain God provided uh, again. Verse 15, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this, you have not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of your enemies, and though through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Again, this is a reiteration of the promise that we've already heard, but he's reiterating it, okay? Verse 19, Then Abraham returned to his, his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba, okay? Um so that concludes the story here of how God provides. But we're going to keep on finish. We're going to finish this chapter. There's a few more verses. You're going to look at this and you're like, it's just a list of names. What's a, the importance of it? But one of those names, as I read through it, you're going to go, wait a minute. The one of those names I, I know, and that is actually God providing for Isaac in the future. Okay. So. This stuff is not just meaningless, you know, uh, names and stuff. It's all showing how God is going to provide um, here. So let me keep reading verse 20. Sometime later, Abraham was told, Milcah is also a mother, and she has borne sons to your brother Nahor. Now this, they live very, very far away. So this would have been, you know, uh, either a messenger or someone traveling through said, you know, this is what's been happening in your hometown. Uz, the firstborn, Buzz, his brother, Camul, the father of Aram, Kesed, Hazo, Pildash, Jadbla, Jeth Bethuel, and Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Milcah bore their, these eight sons to Abraham's brother Nahor. His concubine, whose name was Rum Ruma, also had sons, Teba, Ge. Geham, Tahash, and Maka. Wow, a lot of names there. Did you recognize any of them? I did. Uh, Rebecca. Okay, that's like the one name we can pronounce. So Rebecca is going to be the future wife of Isaac, and it's just it's it's talked about here to kind of show where Rebecca is going to be coming from. All right, but the whole the whole key um, to this whole section that we read today is God will provide. 
and it takes place here on this mountain where God provided that ram. But then it will take place, you know, many, many years later when God provides his son as a sacrifice for us and our sins. Because I deserve to be the one uh, killed on the cross. But God gave his son in sacrifice for my sins in, in place of me. So I don't didn't have to be there. Okay. So uh, hopefully that makes sense here. Thank you for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey. And we're jumping into chapter 23. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then.